the margin issue for breast conservation uh, is a very, very, very challenging uh, issue. And um, this has evolved over the years in a good way, where uh, for many years we thought that we really, the bigger the margin, the better. And that was based somewhat on the fact that, for example, if we do a mastectomy for breast cancer, we typically have very, very wide margins and we don't give radiation because the margins are so wide. So people have asked the question, if we have bigger margins when we do lumpectomies, will the recurrence rate be lower? And for many years we were advocating for very wide margins and the, the downside to that, unfortunately, is that when we remove more breast tissue, we deform the breast more. And also, um, the uh, benefit of the additional margins is less and also if we don't achieve that goal of let's say 10 millimeter margin then patients are going to have second operations or re-excisions. So in the past up to maybe 50 or 60 percent of patients who had lumpectomies were having re-excisions done. So that almost means that every other patient who had a lumpectomy for breast cancer was going back for second operation. So that certainly didn't make sense. And there wasn't good data to inform how big, the, this, how, how wide the margin should be. So the most recent consensus uh, from uh, the SSO and ASTRO uh, suggested that for invasive cancer, that really any margin was okay. So even the thinnest margin, as long as you didn't cut through the tumor, that that margin was adequate. And a lot of studies really have supported that, and that's become actually what we've accepted now. That we don't, so that, that's very good for patients in that they don't have to go back and have second operations very often at all and it, and it has markedly reduced the re-excision rates. So one of, the, one of the controversies about that is that the criteria for the margin clearance are different for invasive, where any margin above zero is okay, versus DCIS, where we have a two millimeter margin. And then our colleagues in the United Kingdom have set guidelines of a one millimeter uh, or greater, sorry, a two millimeter or greater margin as being acceptable for both invasive cancer and for DCIS. So how could that be different in different countries, same patients, same disease? So that's where this meta-analysis was trying to give us more information about the potential benefit of wider margins. And meta-analysis is not a perfect study. It's an analysis of many studies that have been done, which are quite diverse and trying to cull from that uh, some, some further guidance. So I think this third meta-analysis, which was presented in San Antonio, is raising a question about whether some patients with invasive cancer would benefit from slightly larger margins, um, and whether or not we can harmonize the margin number for both ductal carcinoma and cyto and invasive. So, you know, the conclusion is that for patients with clear but close margins, whether that's a millimeter, up to two millimeters, um, whether or not they need re-excision, really has to be based upon the individual characteristics of the patient. And that's why we say most of these patients will discuss at a multidisciplinary tumor board where we look at the pathology, we look at the imaging, the breast surgeons are present, the medical oncologists are present, the radiation oncologists, and we sort of come up with a shared consensus about whether re-excision uh, is really mandatory or not. So it depends on how, so if one margin is close and there's just one cell that's near a margin, that's gonna be very different than if many margins are very, very close. Because really what we're asking with the margin clearance is how much residual disease is there likely to be in the breast and will the radiation that the patients receive take care of that residual disease or not? So it's kind of more of a threshold thing so that I know it's a long answer to your question, but it's a very complex issue, and I can't, so I, I don't want to walk away from this saying, well, I'm sure the one millimeter margin is best, or I'm sure, I think it's good that we've gotten to be much more minimal in what our margins need to be, and I think for most patients, we're still going to stay for invasive cancer with as long as the margin is clear, that we don't have to go back, but I think this study really raises the question is perhaps do we have to broaden uh, the process in terms of thinking about whether for some patients a larger margin might be better. The things we think about is whether the patient will receive additional therapy or not because what's very important we know is that let's say for estrogen receptor positive cancers as patients receive
endocrine therapy as part of their treatment, that also impacts on their recurrence risk. So patients take hormone uh, endocrine therapy, their chance of a recurrence in the breast will be lower even if the margin is a little bit close. If they're not going to take endocrine therapy, they decide they don't want to do it, they're concerned about side effects, then it would motivate us a little bit more towards saying, well, we better maybe have a, a bit of a wider margin because we're not going to have the benefit of them receiving adequate endocrine therapy, which is going to reduce their recurrence risk. The same with radiation. If the plan is pretty much for the patient to receive radiation after a lumpectomy, then the, the clearance of the margin may be less important than for a patient who will not be receiving radiation. So that's why the margin issue is one piece of the overall discussion about what are the treatments will the patient receive or not receive, which will translate into either a higher or a lower local recurrence risk. And that's what we really care about, is we don't want the patient to have another cancer problem in the future that they have to deal with. So we don't, you know, we will advocate to do more aggressive treatment uh, at the initial treatment, um, if necessary. But if patients are going to truly have multimodal therapy and receive endocrine therapy and receive radiation, and there is a close margin, but not very close or maybe minimally close in just one area, then that would affect the decision about whether to re-excise or not.